Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're ready for another amazing speaker. Bright lights today. All right, so next I would like to introduce Erica Kane. She is the founder of Crypto Soul, and today she's going to be talking to us about five years of community building and crypto. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, the noise is pretty loud outside, so I'm going to speak pretty loud. Okay, uh uh, can you hear me? It's good? Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Erica, and I am from Crypto Seoul. I'm the founder, and um, obviously, I'm from Seoul, South Korea, as you probably see by the name. So I came, you know, all the way, 16 hours of flight, but all good. It's my second East Denver, and it's so great to be on this stage. Thank you so much for that. And I'm going to talk about my five years in crypto um, community building experience and what I've gone through and what I learned from the process. So let's go. So who am I? Um, I've been building Crypto Soul since March 2018. So it's a more of a personal brand. And I started very small, but I'm doing all, uh, all kinds of things um, since 2018. And it's now sixth year in the making. So pretty much everywhere doing all kinds of events. I'll explain later what I do. Um, it's been creating a lot of organic community brand from scratch. So it's been quite a journey for me um, to kind of be in the community and kind of starting from zero and then going up. So I'm the host of Middle Asia, Eat Soul, and the Erica Show. I'll explain later about that. So what I create is I organize these types of events, but of course, in a smaller scale. This is pretty huge, but uh, mostly in Seoul, South Korea, um, where I'm based. Um, but I host technical conferences like Eat Denver and builder-focused events. So I really relate to what Eat Denver is doing. And I've been helping on the Eat Denver front as well. So um, you know, it's a very good experience for me to learn from Eat Denver, but you know, also uh, deliver the Biddle spirit all the way to Asia. And then I also hosted Eat Soul since last year. Um, so everyone who's interested in like Soul and who's an Ethereum, you know, please do come to Eat Soul um, to check out the Korean community. And yeah, last year it was a blast. And so, you know, you can see, yeah, Vitalik was there, and um, he was happy to give an opening speech. And you know, um, it was a very meaningful experience. We had a great um, project lineup, and it was just amazing. And then uh, I was also based in Vietnam once. So I, you know, Vietnam is a rising region um, in Asia. So I started to create Biddle Vietnam. Why not create uh, another conference brand uh, in Vietnam and to deliver the Biddle spirit? And so that was my first conference last year in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. And it was a blast as well. We were on national television. So that was pretty uh, exciting experience for me um, coming from South Korea hosting a uh, conference in Vietnam. But it was very technical, also project focused, and community driven as well. So it all aligns together. And also, I not only do conferences, but also curate events worldwide. So I also did an event in Denver um, for uh, Eat Denver, and also all over uh, Bogota, Lisbon, Tokyo, New York, so all over. Um, and so I use the Crypto Soul brand to host my curated events um, with uh, founders, builders, um, community leaders, and so it's been quite a blast so far. And not only that, but also host regular meetups um, in Korea. And you know, as you can see, it's been quite diverse um, range of like size, so big to small. And um, I also collaborate with diverse layer ones out there, so Ethereum, Cosmos, Solana, um, Near, Polkadot. Et cetera, et cetera. So my role since 2018 was to help layer ones and layer two projects to enter Korean market and to kind of, you know, kind of share what they have developed to the builder community over there. So it's been quite a blast so far. And not only offline content, but also online content. And since COVID has been pretty you know, tough on all of us, so I've been also um, dedicated to building out the YouTube channel as well. So I hosted The Erica Show, and you know, we had 51 episodes. So I interviewed like 51 founders. And this is just an example of one speaker over there. Um, but um, you can check out the YouTube channel for more details and good content, hopefully. And I did it only in English, so people, Koreans were kind of 
um, they wanted more Korean content. So I also have a night live show in Korean, um, just kind of talk about what's happening around the world and what's kind of, you know, the macro level news. And so it's been very uh, popular in the Korean community and with uh, Steve Lee from Block Tower Capital. So um, doing, yeah, offline, online, a mixture of that. So it's been quite a, a blast and and then I decided, okay, well, I do so many activities. I have a community brand, and I have, you know, I want to connect them all. Um, so I was looking into the concept of social tokens from like 2019, and I was not very, I don't think I was ready for that uh, at that time. I was kind of new, so I decided to kind of see how it's going. And then on last year, 2022, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do it, <laughs> and I uh, launched uh, Erica Social Token on Optimism which was a very uh, interesting try. And a lot of Koreans were like very blown away. They're like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> That's very cool. Um, why optimism? And um, so now optimism is definitely popular. But back then, it was kind of like new, and everything was like, um, Koreans didn't know optimism that well. So they're like, why optimism? So um, it caused kind of quite a stir. And they asked me a lot of questions. Actually, a lot of social influencers and celebrities, they reached out to me uh, and asked me, like, how it's going, like, you know, they want to explore the social token narrative as well. So, um, yeah, it's going pretty well so far. Like, I'm, I'm pretty laying low on that. It's kind of like constant, just gradual activity. So it's more organic, but I'm not trying to pump it or anything like that. So uh, it's not a pump and dump token. Um, it's more like a membership token. So it's kind of helping. So for EST holders, I just want to, you know, give more care, support, and help to the members and just kind of, you know, integrate. I have so I do so many things for the community, and I just wanted to integrate all of that into one um, by having the token and create a more tighter relationship with my holders and just kind of a regular activities with them. So that's the reason behind the launch. And so basically, holders get access to like exclusive regular meetups. Um, like private meetups and also like mentorship opportunities. So I've been helping a lot of younger women um, who want to get into the space, who's kind of like timid to get in, like who's kind of afraid, right? And kind of help them guide in the right direction. And also I do many events anyway, so I just wanted to give discounts to my EST holders. So that's how I'm trying to use the social token concept um, to the community. So hopefully it's useful. It's been very successful so far. And so what I care about, so it's more of this topic is more like a personal talk. So I just wanted to kind of share my experience and what I really believe in. So I really care about bridging promising projects to build our communities. So, and I have a 14 in South Korea and the Asian market in general. So why not kind of use my forte in like bridging the gap between the East and West and also introducing really good projects out there to the South Korean community. So. Uh, I really care about that. It's been like six years, and I've been very consistent. And then also uh, building a strong community that is independent and neutral. So it's not biased towards one protocol, it's very neutral, uh, platform agnostic, and technical as well. So I really care about having that balanced community. And I think it really works in the longer term as well. It's very unique too. I think you know, uh, by keeping that uh, forte, it's been very helpful for me to organize more diverse events. So I really like that. And then also, I really love education, um, inspiration, and mentoring, um, especially to younger women, I, as I mentioned before. Um, and I, I'm from a women's university in South Korea, so all the you know aspiring uh, women, uh, fellow students, they come up to me and they ask me how to come into the space. So I actually, like some of the graduates are here uh, to. Uh, to look into Eat Denver, but I'm very proud of them, by the way. They got a scholarship to come. Um, but yeah, as for me, I really want to help them to grow and to navigate, find right projects to work with, and so that's my job, and I, I really care about that. And I stay away, okay, so this is a very important part. So you have to stay away from certain things, right? Um, so <laughs> I get, just people think of me as like an influencer or like, um, you know, a marketer, so they, you know, they kind of sell these opportunities to me with an enormous chunk of money, but I don't sell my soul <laughs> to meaningless promotional activities. And you know, it's really hard to say no to these things because I know like money's tempting and everything. But I know it's like it's not right for me, and I don't feel comfortable doing it. So I just deny it all kinds of you know activities like that. And it has really helped me so far, actually. So. 
at, back then, you know, I, I didn't, I'm, I'm not a billionaire, so I guess I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm losing in that sense, but reputationally, I gained so much, a stronger reputation, so I think, you know, I did the right thing by not selling my soul, uh, so that's good. And then also, I was being swayed by many, many uh, powers in this space, such as, I don't want to say, I don't want to name people, but like, you know, media uh, or certain media part media companies or even politicians or uh, all sorts of companies in Korea who really, you know, want to sway me in a certain direction and who want to like destroy my community power in that in a sense. So it's been very, you know, bizarre uh, in the past five years. Um, but I stay independent, as I said, and I really want to stay strong to what I believe in. So I was not swayed, and I just kept to my roots, and I just wanted to keep going with what I'm doing. And it can be, community can be looked down upon to some. It can be weak to some people because it's not earning money or it's not, you know, having political power or media power. But, you know, I stayed really strong and defiant. And I think in the longer run, people started believing in me now. They, you know, trusted my instincts and they respect me now. So that's, it really worked out well for me. So two things that you have to stay away from. <laughs> and then people always ask me, why do you do all this, all of this activities and pour my soul and effort and time into it? And doesn't it, doesn't it make like humongous amounts of money, right? Why do you do that? And they think, many people think that I have some kind of internal intention or like ambition or like long-term, you know, uh, money-making goal or something. They always ask me every day when, I, when they approach me and like, why do you do this? Like, this is too much. Like, this is like labor for you. <laughs> why do you do it? What's your grand plan, right? Um, and I know that community building is really, really hard and everyone doesn't have an answer. So it's really, I know it's hard. Even for me, it's like still a question mark, to be honest. And especially if you want to do it right. I mean, go step by step. It's so, so hard. Um, it takes a lot of time and your effort and your passion. Um, and especially in Asia, I mean, I don't want to generalize regions, but South Korea and you know, Vietnam, they're very price focused, right? They want to ask like, why, you know, when moon, right? That's the first question that everyone asks. And so it's really hard to persuade them to focus on the project and to learn about the project in the longer run. It's really hard. Um, but so I've been facing many challenges in that sense. And also from bridging the gap between the East and West, well, Asia, non-Asian regions. So it's so hard to introduce in the right direction with the cultural gap, language gap, and everything. You know, there's a huge gap, actually. And, um, and for me, it's been very, it's a huge challenge to main, remain local, but also being global at the same time. It's, it's a hard, hard job. And I think that's why I'm here, is to really, like, you know, put myself out there in the global scene, but also going back to Korea, do my local stuff, and then, you know, coming back outside as well. So it's like, a simul it's like two jobs, basically, going back and forth, back and forth. So it's really hard. Like, community building in the right direction, it's so hard. But, but I realized that efforts did pay off. Like, it really... It really did, and you know, year by year, it's getting better. I'm getting more recognized and, I guess, respected in that sense. And sincerity really pays off. Passion really pays off. Um, and for me, like, I've learned to be really, really patient um, and build one relationship at a time. So as you know, like, there are many chat rooms where like 14,000 people, like, they talk about the price, and like, everyone's just like, kind of like swearing and whatever. <laughs> and it's not very healthy, right? But they care about the number, like. 4,000 people, how many people are in the room? I don't really, I don't think that's really the key. I think like a small room with like 100 people with good discussions, I think that's more valuable in the longer run than having like, you know, 40,000 people in one room but not talking anything about the project um, and not learning from each other. So um, for me, when I approach projects, when I approach founders, it's like one-on-one -on -one relationship and it's one at a time. So it takes a lot of patience, a lot of sincerity, a lot of communication, but it, you know, I really enjoy doing it, and I've been doing it for six years now, and it's really paying off. I really assure you, it's really paying off. And they do scale eventually, they do. So, and there are people who are trying to do the right thing, especially East Denver stewards. You know, I want to give like huge shout out to everybody here. Like, 
they're doing the right thing. I think people are sacrificing like their time and they're pouring everything into it to making this community event a success. And there are people like that. It's very rare, but there are people like that. And as for me, I'm doing the same thing for Asia and for Korea and for Vietnam. Uh, we're all in it for the soul touching experiences. Like, you know, it's really like it fulfills your soul. Like it makes me so happy to see people being inspired and learning and connecting with the right people. And so, and that keeps me going. And I think I'm, in, I'm doing the right thing, right? Um, and as you probably know, community building is pretty underrated. Um, people think it's easy to run an event like this. And it's so, so hard. As you, if you do it once, you're gonna realize it's so hard to run an event, to pe get people engaged, and to communicate with them and to sustain that activity like year by year, right? It's so, so challenging, but it's underrated. It's very underrated. And especially like, you know, a strong community, it's so hard to maintain. So um, you have to realize that a strong community does shape the crypto industry and it will expand it to a bigger ecosystem. So it is definitely the key. People say community is important, it's important, but who's really doing it, right? And people it, behind the scenes being like down there, like really like organic growth, like, you know, people here, they're really doing the right thing, but they're really um, contributing to expanding the ecosystem to organic growth. So um, yeah, there are people like that. Um, I know I'm doing something right, and I realized this uh, year by year, it's like growing incrementally, but I'm making meaningful connections um, without intentionally. So one example was that uh, after ETH Soul, um, so my friend, she came up to me and she's like, oh, you know, I'm in FinTech, but I met this founder in the space, and he's really cool, and they kept in touch for five months, and then she got a job at the foundation as director as a result. So I'm like, okay, well, and she thanked me so much after being connected like that, and that was very organic. I didn't plan this, I didn't connect them, but they met at my event, and they got connected, and they led to a very beautiful business relationship, right? So they, these, these things happen more and more, so I really feel like, okay, I'm doing the right thing, right? And also, like, they, people thank me for organizing a good event or having a really good initiative. And so these things really make me feel like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something right <laughs> after all these years, right? And yeah, I'm trying to make a positive impact and I think it's working. Um, and especially to the Korean community and also to the global community. So I'm trying to be the bridge. And so um, what it takes to build a global authentic community brand. So I try to think because I usually execute rather than, I don't really give talks. Um, I usually, I'm probably on the ground working. So I try to think, what, it, what does it take um, to build this brand? Of course, my brand is not as huge or strong in the global sense, but I think it's pretty, pretty tight. So um, I was trying to think what it takes to do that. Number one is cross-cultural communication. Um, as you probably know, it's either like, English-friendly areas or non-English-friendly areas. It's very different, and there are a million languages in the world, and it's so hard to bridge that gap in language, culture, um, et cetera. And for me, I, I'm bilingual, so I do like Korean and English, like back and forth, but that is very important to understand each other's cultures and to kind of try to bridge the gap. So I think that's really crucial, number one. Number two is consistency. So one large event, doesn't really kill it all. You have to do like every every year or do it very consistently, especially meetups as well, because I used to do monthly meetups and that's a very big job to do. <laughs> you have to plan every month. If one ends, then you have to start another one. So it's kind of back and forth. So being consistent really paid off. It kind of made my portfolio and also really made me like, oh, she's a very passionate, consistent person. So it kind of made me proof that I am doing really consistent work. Number three is crea creativity. When you're planning events or when you're like doing community work, you have to make sure that you are unique. You're doing something that's unique, that stands out, that's very helpful. And so I am using all my creativity skills to plan events like this and also curate content. And I've never been creative in my life, but I think being in crypto has really helped me be like use my you know uh, create creative side of the brain, basically. And it really helped me to gain that um, brand power. And number four is curation. 
Um, I think like who's in the group, who's in the you know conference, who's like attending it, is so important. I mean, of course, it cannot be a private event, but I think the teams that are surrounding you or supporting you, they are making the event a success. And I think, especially East Denver, I think it's a very good case of like that. But um, being able to curate in the right direction and making sure that you have solid partners and really like helpful supporters, it's very, very um, useful. And I think I've done a lot of curation on my side and it's been, it's been paying off a lot. So yeah, and um, some word of advice. Um, yeah, just find what you're best at. I think like finding your forte is very important. You can't do everything. I'm not a developer, but I'm good at what I do, which is like planning events and like curation, everything. So. And what makes you happy, basically? I love community work. I love building a community. I love like connecting with people. And so, yeah, I'm a people person. So I guess this is my job, right? <laughs> it's a meant to be. Um, and also, you have to develop your sixth sense, which is finding like solid projects, kind of be able to discover the right people for you. It's really, really important. Um, and in order to do this, you have to meet a lot of people. You have to meet a lot of projects to get that sixth sense. When I look at projects, I can kind of sense now by just looking at them, like if they're good people or not good people. I mean, I'm not judging too much, but still, I can get a sense if their intention is right or wrong, right? And you have to remember, as, you, as I stressed uh, before, that community does expand the ecosystem, so it's very, very important. And you're being, you're like, you should be overrated, basically. Very, very um, important skills. And right now, some people say, oh, you know, I got first mover advantage by starting the community early, but not really. I think it's still early, so it's not never too late to, to start. Yeah, so please start small and then scale up, and, and then you can money can follow later, and yeah, so you can build your own brands. Okay, as for me, I'm everywhere. Um, Twitter, um, er ericaking.eth um, as well, and um, I have a YouTube channel, Crypto Souls, so check me out, and it's in Korean English, so you can check that out too. Um, you can contact me here. Uh, Telegram, you can come up to me as well. And join my event in June in <laughs> South Korea and Vietnam. Thank you so much. Thank